Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today we're going to be doing some more high sec exploration in the Drake. Now I've come to a system actually that is actually happens to be occupied by some Edencom uh, people or the Edencom corporation or faction. And it gives me a bit of bonus to my shield capacity which is much appreciated in the Drake. Too bad my ship basically just tanks everything here in high sec, no problem. It would have been a lot more useful if this was a low sec kind of system. Then it will be really like, you know. Good time that little shield boost bonus here, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter too much since we're not passive tanked. If we were passive tanked, then that ten percent would actually I can see that making a big a big difference actually. But it's quite nice here in this system because we've got two of these Garista's dens, and these are the ones that can potentially go and escalate to the five out of ten, the best kind of escalation you can get in high sick. So in the meantime, I'm actually going to just lock up these guys here, and also deploy my core scanner probes I want to scan down these signatures right here just to see if there's anything interesting going on we can put this here we can put a little target painter and we can also deploy our drones just do a little bit of extra damage you know and keep my shield boost on okay good 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 and got a little bit of a skilling spree as well that's nice Mm -hmm. The Garista's Dens, there I remember I died for the f one of the first times I died. Not the first time I died. Okay, I guess the first time I ever died to something in high sec, you could say. That was to a Garista's Den. Because I remember what I did was, I actually uh, used a Caracal, actually. And it was just after I discovered the Ancillary Shield Boosters, actually. I didn't know anything about Ancillary Shield Boosters until this incident that happened <laughs> and what happened was is that uh, I, I was just like you know seeing the ancillary shield boosters seeing that wow they get so much boosting in the shield compared to the tech one variants because i couldn't even use tech two back then this was when i was in alpha club we're talking 2017 right here and the like shield boosting capabilities of standard tech one stuff is nothing compared to tech two and i saw just that the ancillary shield boosters give so much boosting. I was just like, how is it possible? Why is this kind of magic stuff that allows you to have such good boost rate? And then I see that the large ancillary shield boosters, they need this, you know, charge, you know, the cap, uh, cap uh, recharge or cap booster. And these cap charges, then I thought, that okay, yeah, that must make sense because you get so good boost because you have to use this ammo. And also something I was really happy about was that I saw that it didn't it use basically any capacitor. All the capacitor was taken care of by these charges. So I was just so happy. I was thinking, oh, you know what? I'm going to be able to tank anything. I can just tank anything with my little caracal right here. So what I did was, I think I even had an extra large ancillary shield booster caracal. And it had a crazy good tank. Actually, really good tank. But well, I, I just went to a Grista's den. And then I, went, <laughs> I just started killing you know, NPCs. And it was actually going really good. Really good, was actually going. But then, when my charges ran out, I didn't expect my shields to drop as quickly as they did. And they dropped fast, and I died really quickly. And it was such a noob, it was so noobie of me because, I mean, it's, bloody, it's in bloody high sec. <laughs> I should be, oh, it's in the Grista's Den without any scrams or anything. I would have been able to, should have been able to just warp off but then i just lose my 30 million caracal that the time 30 million was worth a lot it took me a really long time to get that 30 million i was quite annoyed i went to, did a similar thing in a moa actually where i used the extra large and shield shield boost to fit as well in a moa and this had that had a lot better tank actually just because of the innate shield resistances of the moa uh, but i managed to i believe i managed to do the the Garista's dens in the moa but then and after this encounter with the caracal i decided now nah, you know what it's just better that i have a standard shield booster and it should be good i mean you really don't need any particular tank even in the Garista's den but it's easy for me to say now who's an omega clone with really good skills able to equip these really good modules i mean it's only a c type and a tech 2 here that still is pretty good modules i've got so I'm not really one to talk right now because I, I, I do remember those times where skills, the lack of skills really made you just really crappy. And I'm glad that I'm not there now, actually. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not there now. It was a, there was a lot more, fewer things I could do then, actually. Let's get close to these 
NPCs. It's actually the heavier zone missiles that I'm using. I thought it would be a bit of problems with uh, like the range, but it's not really much problem. I mean, everything here is at close range, so it's okay. It's good that we went with the application right here. We could have maybe even maybe double target painters, though. I'm not 100% sure. Let me know in the comments below if you know if do two target painters is better or a target painter and a missile precision script is better. I think that this is better because they, they're kind of like diminishing returns when you use the two of the same module. But I'm not sure. If you guys know, let me know. Because I would like to know. It would be appreciated to know what is most efficient. But in my personal experience, I've not really noticed a whole lot of difference. But I feel like this is slightly better. Just so that... I, and I like the uh, ability of being able to have a range script as well on this. If I want, I could have a little bit extra range. But then again, it doesn't really matter too much with the range. Because it's only a tiny bit increase in range. I mean, it's not a tiny bit. I mean, like a six, a six kilometer, I think, increase in range. And at that point, six kilometers is something which I would be able to get in a couple of seconds with my MWD if I wanted to get really close, so it doesn't really matter. But here, you know, we were doing a bunch of these, uh, you know, combat sites before, and it was unfortunate. The luck was not on our side. The luck was not on our side. Uh, but at least we've got some dens here. This is why I was just, I was actually just cruising today. It's then I, I was cruising through high sec, just seeing if I could find any dens and... That's exactly what I found right here. So that's when I thought we should start showing off this thing. If there's something potential we could get. You can see here in the dens actually. That they often, they're, they're different variants of the dens. And some of them is like this one. Where you have to actually destroy some of the light batteries. To be able to get the final waves. Or the later waves at least. Like yeah, I, I remember when I was a newbie. Then I would just kill all the NPCs and just think like. Oh wait, okay it's finished. But actually, sometimes... If you still hear the Garista's background noise, you can hear their kind of roaring. Then you want to take out the the light missile batteries because that this is, that means that the like the site is still not finished. You still have stuff to do. Uh, the like the missile batteries kind of count as a trigger for the next spawn. In in some variants, not all variants of the Garista's den, but some variants. In just in the in this case, where you're doing that variant right here. Let's shoot this guy. We don't even have to look at the at the probe scan tab because we basically scanned down everything. But the wormholes, useless wormholes. Unfortunate. You know, the Drake actually is possible to do wormhole ratting in it. And that's actually quite possible because you can actually fit a pretty mean passive tank on it. And I think even an active tank you could probably put if you put a lot of flux coils in the low slots. You get a lot of EHP per second, actually. So I did not get any did not get any particular escalation here and it doesn't seem like we're any dread garistas so what we'll do here is go in the agency and look for something so there we go hutaken has a refuge so we'll go there and go for that one something i was actually thinking about doing next so uh, this like obviously this stuff in high sec is really relaxing and it can be profitable if you're lucky but i mean you can often go as you can see doing this stuff for a long time and not really find anything and that is a bit can be a bit disappointing sometimes so with that thing i was thinking actually of doing later maybe not necessarily next time i you know show you guys some gameplay of what i'm doing in eve online but in the future at least is that i want to take this to low sec i want to be able to hunt or ha like hunt those uh, clone soldier guys the clone soldiers are this particular type of npcs that can spawn in belts and they are relatively common i actually used to earn isk by hunting them actually in low sec uh, a long time ago actually it was when i was an alpha clone actually and i can imagine now it'll go a lot smoother a lot quicker because i'm an omega clone got good skills and also i'll be using a drake i used to do it in an omen and the omen i mean it's pretty crappy compared to this drake right here and i've also got more skills something that actually that made me also want to be able to use this drake in low sec is because the cruisers their whole price is not particularly expensive very cheap like eight million or something like that and uh, the main thing that cost actually is the modules. The modules will, I noticed, actually cost more than the actual hull itself. The Drake, on the other hand, it actually has the still medium modules. So it's basically got the exact same modules as the uh, the like cruisers or the Omen would have. So like the pro you can think of it like the price of the uh module or the modules is constant the only difference is the price of oh we've got an ambulance nearby 
Yeah, I actually live quite close to a hospital, so it's a, not. I don't know if you guys can hear, but there's an ambulance nearby. A lot of cor coronavirus cases as well actually are going on, so it could possibly be that what's going on actually. So, hope they at least make it through. <laughs> um, the Drake, it, it, like if I were to compare this with another Tech One cruise, it, the the price for modules will kind of be constant, assuming I use like Tech One, Tech Two, or Tech Plus Tech One, but the price of the hull will be different obviously the battle cruisers cost quite a bit more than the uh than the than the cruisers however if you insure a battle cruiser you get actually almost all the isk back from the hull not not all of it but almost all the isk back from, from the hull and if i do die in low sec which is like a lot more high or like quite high probability sooner or later then i'll it'll be you can think of it it's like what i'm trying to say is it's kind of like the same risk so to say as a cruiser obviously you don't get all that isk back but um like the the, the price difference between a tech 2 fitted cruiser and a tech 2 fitted uh, battle cruiser is quite different like the battle cruiser will cost quite a bit more than the tech 2 fitted cruiser and that but that has a lot to do with the whole price and the whole price you can get a lot of that isk back through insurance so what i'm trying to say is that kind of like the stuff you're putting on the line by using a standard tech one uh, or uh, like a like a battle cruiser is not a whole lot different compared to a, a tech one cruiser because you will get a lot of that isk back from the whole so the hull kind of is not really the biggest factor and the modules you're using are essentially the same because battle cruisers and cruisers use the same size modules so it's not really that big of a difference in the, the risk you're putting on the line there and since battle cruisers are quite a bit stronger than cruisers i definitely think it would be a good candidate for being able to go into low second to do some potential ratting actually so that's why i'm actually going to, to use this or at least i plan on using this ship maybe i won't but i plan at least on using this in low sec to be able to hunt the clone soldiers i want to be able to find them and i'll obviously then be doing this in garista space because the npcs will have their kinetic hole i could actually do it in serpentis space as well because the lowest resistance of the serpentis is kinetic as well if i recall correctly yeah it was kinetic so I will actually then the, be, t be taking this to either Serpentis or Goristus, Losek. And I'll be looking for the clone soldiers in relatively quiet systems, hopefully, to not get attacked by some people. <laughs> and uh, this thing should have really good tank, uh, be able to survive the NPCs, no problem. Because this the tank I can achieve on this uh, Drake is a lot more than any kind of uh, omen that I would have ever had before. And something I was also thinking about is actually getting a new Drake specifically for low sec. Because actually, I've got some implants in that make my shield boosting capabilities a lot better. So that's why it's quite good that I have this shield booster right here. Also, that I'm using the C-type medium shield booster that also just makes me in general have quite good shield boosting. But actually, if I were to have uh, just standard tech 1 or tech 2 passive uh, fit drake i would have similar ehp per second or shield boosting per second as actually this strip here right, right here if i were to only have like tech 2 modules so actually i think for like the 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 like performance for price it'll actually be about this this uh it'll be actually a little bit better actually to go with uh, the passive tank because i'll kind of get essentially the same tank as what i've or what i've like similar tank to what i've got now it will be more obviously what we've got now but it'll be costing quite a bit less because the i look at the price of a passive tank uh, with the rigs and all that kind of stuff the pa the passive tank uh, drake is actually quite a bit less than uh, uh, than the active tank actually it has a bit to do with the shield booster and also with the rigs as well so i think i'll be going with that in low sec and it's also you know it's, it's uh, i guess good in a way that you have a bit of a buffer so that say for example someone does catch you in a gate you'll have a bit of time to be able to mwd back towards the gate to be able to go back through it you know there's always that little time you've got extra within going with a buffer or passive tank i'll actually show you guys what i'm thinking of bringing uh actually no i did not have it hmm, it was not here well this is basically what it was i was going to remove this remove this and then remove all these rigs right here and then I was going to put, actually, let's just get in range of these NPCs right here. Uh, I'll actually deploy my core scanner probes as well and just make a big spread formation. 
Okay, let's just lock this stuff up. The Hecate is a very potent exploration ship or a combat anomaly, high sec anomaly ship. So I am getting out competed pretty hard actually right here. Why this guy he can achieve very high DPS and very, almost perfect application just due to the fact that the, the light neutron blasters are very powerful in their tracking, especially in a T3 uh, destroyer. But I do have a bit of range that helps a bit in that regard as well, actually. But what I was thinking of doing is going with a large shield extender here. And actually, I was thinking of maybe... Uh, actually, I was going to go with the compact one. Let's just recall the drones. Let's get a scan off just to be able to scan some of the signatures. Move this over there. Move this over there make it a tiny bit smaller there good 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 okay so you go regolith that's the compact one i want that one and i was actually thinking of using two compact ones there then i was going to use a purger one medium core defense field purger we get 57 hp per second and also possibility would be to use an extender one as well oh there's a combat site interesting that could be something Oh, we're going to get a 4 out of 10 now. That'll be really good. Mm. Okay, so we've got 57 EHP per second, or HP per second, if we have the purges. And then if we have... Um, let's see, yeah, there we go. We have triple one of these. We get 47. So it's a bit less, but we get more buffer. I think I'll prefer to have the one with high recharge per second, because we're mainly going to be fighting NPCs. I can imagine the extender will be a bit better in a better fight against a player because there I don't think the slight difference in recharge will really matter. They're in reducing the time it takes for us to like kill the or get, to avoid to survive as long as possible. I think we'll survive longer if we have the extenders. But for NPCs where we're kind of tanking also stuff, we'll be able to essentially tank more stuff per second if we have some purger ones actually so i think i'll have something like this something i was also considering was to replace this missile guidance computer oh there's another cosmic signature as well let's just go and scan this one and we can actually just look for a and now there's a lot of windows right here it's kind of annoying me but oh there's a lot of stuff in here we can go to this system over here i can imagine that hecate is going there because there's a lot of stuff here but we can warp on the gate there yeah we've got the drones and then we can move this over here there increase size there okay i was thinking of actually replacing this with a target painter paint there we could put this here because then i could have more cpu and then i could put some better shielding modules i'm not 100 percent sure which one i'll take but we will be able to tank quite a bit if we go something like this. Look, shield extender two. Then we go with the kinetic shield, kinetic shield hardener. If we even go with the dread garistas, actually, dread garistas kinetic shield hardener because the dread garistas one is a tiny bit better than the tech two one actually, and it doesn't cost a whole lot as well. So you can see here we can actually fit this without any big issues actually. Let's just see how much CPU do we have over if we give a missile guidance computer. If we replace this, because I was thinking of using the two target painters, but then I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, we can't fit this. If it'll be kind of inefficient, you know, to have that. And it'll be also nice to have that little bit of extra, you know, range. Okay, we've got, let's, there's a new refuge here. Let's go for that refuge. No, actually, we'll, yeah, let's go for the refuge and we'll scan down this signature in this system. Could you know it just spawned? It could maybe be a combat site that someone did. Hmm. So this is what I was thinking of maybe doing is going with two target painters, or I was gonna just go with a missile guidance computer like this, and then just go with like a large regolith. Something like that. Possible, possible right there. Then again, I would have better like total hp if i were to just go with another regolith instead of this one but this will give me a very good very very good um, tank against the garista so i think i'll actually go with this one. Oh, there's a relic sign okay but we're not going to do relic signs so no, not really on the agenda today <laughs> let's just lock up these guys have our drones go to work so i think i'll be going like this just to be able to have 
the missile guidance computer. So we'll save this. Drake Losec PVE. There we go. And if you guys can think of some improvements, just let me know. I'm always open to suggestions in the future. Okay, good, good. Let's shoot these guys. I can imagine now, actually, that, that Hecate probably went. Oh, he didn't. Or maybe it's just not updated yet. You know, I don't know how long it takes for these things to update, but maybe it could have been that that Heke has gone to this system and just taking all these dens right here. I'm not sure how long it takes for it to update as well. And yeah, the there's a Heke to actually really good uh, high sec exploration platforms. I should uh, start using it, but uh, I like the Drake. The Drake is really cool. <laughs> The trick I, I think the appearance of the ship is just really it is it, there's something unique about it which i can't describe it's kind of like it it's it behaves a bit small but at the same time it looks really big like it's not extremely big because it's a battle cruiser it's not a battleship but at the same time it's kind of constructed in a way which makes it look like epic and majestic hard to explain like the way it's sort of formed like a boat almost like a very big <laughs> boat and it just makes it look like a like almost like a it's hard to explain but it feels like it looks big but at the same time but it's not particularly big i like those kind of ships because it makes them feel more epic than they actually are <laughs> so you know what is the shape what is the size of the drake yeah 500 meters long that's just a bit bigger than your average cruiser which usually is going around for like two four two three to four hundred meters long so it's right there in the spot where you ought to find a battle cruiser, just in between a battleship and a battle cruiser. Shoot these guys, die very quickly. Yes, that's, that's, that's good. Target painted to have a little bit more damage. Yeah, he died really quickly when I target painted him. Good. Okay. Doesn't seem like there's anything interesting going on here. Let's go to the next system, see if there's anything there. There's a lot of wrecks all over the place, actually. Uh, it could be possible to go with a, a mobile tractor unit. Definitely a possibility right there, because even though, I mean, you don't really get particularly rare drops. You can't get like faction modules, some standard NPCs, but you can get actually, occasionally, you can get some very high value meta modules. Examples of these would be, for example, the damage control. Damage control. You see this one goes for 2.2 million, and that's a pretty nice little, you know, boost to your income when you've got that. When you get one of those to drop and there's also a few other ones i can't remember now what they're called maybe attackion oh wait this is invaded by chuglavian forces what no how is this system invaded by chuglavian forces okay we'll go in anyway because we can just use our mwd to go back to the the gate why is this chuglavian forces right here what how are the chuglavian forces i thought they had all gone What is this? There's some uh, new stuff for me that I'm not really, uh, not really aware of because it. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. This is a bit scary, but we'll go anyway and do these characters dance. <laughs> Strange to just find. What is this? I thought the invasion stuff is over. I'm really not up to date. I think there must be something I'm missing here. But there's a lot of combat sites here. Maybe it scared off a lot of people, so we'll be able to at least grab some some <laughs> some signatures if there's anything good in here hopefully there is actually hmm what is this doing so this makes remote shield boosters and we get opponent penalty to lock targets so it'll be a bit annoying oh there's someone else here that then just disappeared ah that's annoying so then i guess someone else is here just doing the exact same thing we're doing yeah there's a gila over here <laughs> no gila I do about the same amount of DPS as the Gila, though. It's not like we're doing crap DPS or anything. We'll still be able to compete quite easily with the Gila. In fact, in some way, it's better because we'll take it'll take time for the Gila's drones to apply. The missiles also take time for them to reach the target that we've got, but they're still faster than the Gila's drones, actually. A lot faster, actually. Okay, where's this one here? Go and... Make this a little bit smaller, see if there's anything, anything interesting here. Has there got any core scanner probes? Are there any other core scanner probes? So, there's a bunch of nestles here, and I can imagine these guys, they're doing these sites that they can find. Oh, another another guy here, another guy. Oh, that's annoying, but 
Um, is there another something, something, something? No, there's no NPC we can shoot to maybe potentially get an escalation. Because there's always that chance if you just kill one of them, always that chance you can get an escalation. But it wasn't the case in both of these. We just came, happened to come at the exact, uh, the the wrong time. It was all because we went for that refuge in the last system. Then it made it so that we just came here. Otherwise, we would have probably come just before the Skila and Ishtar. Because if I had gone to then one of them, then uh, I would have, there were, the other site would have finished quick, and then I would have been able to go to the second den as well. That has been doing by the Ishtar or the Gila. But it's alright. That's just the way it is. You can never predict everything in EVE Online. That's what also leaves the game to be a bit of a mystery sometimes. And the mystery can be very big when it comes to the RNG in this game. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of the RNG. <laughs> I am. RNG is something that I encounter a lot in this game. And it's quite uh, infrequently on my side, actually. It's quite rarely on my side. Which is a bit unfortunate. Okay. Deploy these drones. Good, good, good. Is there anything interesting here? Make this a little bit smaller. Start shooting this stuff. Okay, good. I wonder if there's going to be any interesting combat sites. The only thing I'm thinking is that I, the, when, it, when I get a little bit excited is if you see the, the level 1 scanning difficulty, then they actually can be quite good. So they can be the 4 out of 10s, I think they're scanning difficulty 1. Don't quote me though, but I think that they are level 1 scanning difficulty when it comes to the 4 out of 10s. And those are kind of the ones, who, the best thing we can ever encounter here in the course probe scanner. I've never found a 5 out of 10 by scanning. I do not think it's possible to do get the 5 out of 10s. It would have been nice. I don't even think I could actually tank a 5 out of 10, but it would be at least nice to find one. And I, if I can't tank it, I can always bring something else, like the Onyx or even a battleship, actually. There's oh, a bunch of wormholes. I wonder if these wormholes lead to Pochven, because these wormholes, there's a bunch of wormholes in this system. And if there are wormholes here, maybe they would lead, they, it would make sense that they would have a bunch of Pochven wormholes here, because you know, the Triglavians would want to be able to get back to their homeworlds quite easily. Hmm. I wonder. Maybe we could even visit one. We'll say, actually, let's do that. Or you can actually visit one after this. See if there's any Pochven wormholes anywhere. I'm just wondering, like, what is this system considered? Like, what is this? What do they consider this uh, system to be? Because I get the invasion is over, so it's not an invasion. I'm guessing. What is it then? Why? Why is this kind of uh, system? I've, I've never. This is the first time I've ever encountered this kind of system before since the invasion. Actually, I wish the emerging conduits would come back. I love those emerging conduits. Really nice, nice PVE sites you can do in high sec. Just chill like that. And get some decent loot from them. I mean, not amazing, but it's decent. I, I, I miss those a lot. They were one of my favorite things you could actually do in high sec. I preferred them over doing high sec exploration like this, and even to some extent the the missions, because at, in the emerging conduits, you kind of hit a bit of competition as well. Because sometimes if there's a boss spawn, you would have to make sure you compete or do the most amount of DPS to be able to get get the last NPC, and that kind of give a bit of thrill to it which you don't get from missions i wish there were more regular activities that you could actually have in eve online that involved a bit of competition like that and competition in the way that doesn't involve blowing each other's ships up because you know obviously you know what's going to happen if that is the case i'm obviously going to be the first person to die as it always happens in things in pve things in eve online or pvp things in it or events in eve online okay let's Move this there, move this there, good, and we'll make it a bit smaller. These wormholes. Wormholes are kind of in the center of the system right here. This combat sig this signature seems a bit hard to scan down. Ah, it seems pretty hard to scan down, I'm not going to bother with this. Let's go and scan down this wormhole right here. See if we've got anything interesting here. Make it a bit bigger. Is there any interesting thing? No, there's nothing interesting on the on the core or the anomalies that we can do. Let's see on the agency actually, is there anything interesting nearby? Uria, there's one here. So we can actually warp towards Uria maybe. Actually no, because we're gonna warp to the the wormhole. So we'll just check out the wormhole quickly. See if there's anything in there. Scan this, scan this. 
I the scanning. I remember I used to think that well, there's no way you will be able to scan in a ship that's not bonus to scanning, but actually it's quite possible. It just as it usually would be. There's a lot slower. Just the main thing is that you can't do those high level scanning things in like the level four ones or those ghost sites or the really hard data and relic sites, and they'll be hard. Otherwise, most of the stuff you can still scan down actually to quite a big extent actually. So we'll warp in a hundred because if this is a push from wormhole, it would not surprise me if there are a bunch of Triglavians scouting this thing. So let's see if there is in fact any uh, thing going on in that wormhole right there. And actually, sorry guys, I think I should have instead done like this because I'm imagining you guys want to see my ship if you are actually w w watching the actual video, not just listening. You probably want to see the ship, not just see this map all the time. Something like this probably would be the best, but then again, I can't see. Maybe like this. Like this, because I'm anyway not really paying attention to the local, actually. We'll do like this. Mm -hmm. We could actually maybe make this a little bit smaller as well. There we go. Now we can see the ship a bit better. It's nice to always be able to see your ship. Let's see now, where does this go to? Leads into unknown parts of space. Okay, then it's not the Porch Fen, actually. Porch Fen will say that it leads to Triglavian space, if I'm correct about that. Maybe with some of these wormholes and do lead to Porch Fen, but uh, I, um, I, I don't know. I would, uh, I would have maybe expected more of them. I can't be bothered to scan the rest of these guys down. It's going to take a long time. I'm going to go for this den right here. Den, wait, den in Uria. We'll see if there's anything cool there. And I think after this den in Uria, we're going to call it for today because it's uh, a lot of sites I've done or it's going on, I've been going on for quite a while. Fortunate that it doesn't seem like much has been found, but it was still, you know, at least there was always that possibility. You know, there was always that possibility, and it was not too bad. We've encountered some interesting competitions to the Hecate, the Gila, and the Ishtar. Maybe next time, we'll, or maybe in this next site, we will find something cool. And if I'll do, I'll then have to make a, a video about the 5 out of 10. That'll be pretty fun to watch, actually. That'll be pretty, pretty fun to do, actually. Okay, let's go to the next system. But I instead think that something that will be more fun to use a Drake for, because I just want it in general, I want to just be able to use the Drake. I like the Drake. The Drake is cool. I think the Drake looks cool, and it, just in speaking, feels quite like functional. It's got quite a high DPS. I mean, not crazy DPS, but we've got some decent DPS. We've got some decent tank. I mean, not amazing tank. Everything is not amazing, but it's still good. And it's pretty cheap as well. This one is pretty expensive just because of the way I'm using this. You see, the C type multi spectrum is quite expensive. That is what the main cost actually on this ship. But um, the actual, like, it just it, it looks good in my opinion, performs decently well, and it's not as slow as a battle cruise, a uh, battleship. And it can also do the four out of tens. Battleships can't do the four out of ten sites, so that's why. This is something that I would prefer to go with if I were to do this high sec exploration. Uh, Battleship is not what you want to use because they're so slow as well. But they also can't go in the 4 out of 10s. You can go in the 5 out of 10s actually. It is possible to do that. So if you want to do the 5 out of 10s, you can always just pull out your rattlesnake. That's something I was actually thinking of doing. Just using a rattlesnake. Because it will be a lot faster as well. But Or maybe even a marauder would be better because a marauder... I don't even know if you can actually use a marauder in a 5 out of 10. Not 100% sure. But if you can, I can definitely see a Marauder being something good for a 5 out of 10 because you need lots of tank, but you also need quite a bit of DPS to get through the NPCs quicker because there is there are quite a few NPCs you can encounter in the 5 out of 10s. Actually, let's deploy our drones. Get these going. There we go. Take out this guy. Take out this guy. Target bait a little bit just to amplify a little bit of the DPS. There we go, there we go. Easy, easy, easy. Just blitzing through these guys so fast, it's so very satisfying actually. And then you got the drones also there working behind your back as well. So you just notice the way one just popped like an NPC just popped like that. Oh yeah, that was my drones. It's a very nice feeling actually, just seeing your drones do all this stuff autonomously without you having to really tell them a whole lot apart from just get, go kill those guys, go kill those guys. <laughs> Okay, let's just do one volley like this. Should be enough. Yeah, good, good, good. And we'll put the destroy these light missile batteries in case they are the ones that trigger another wave. I'm not. I don't think this is the case because we've already got a wave here. But oh yeah, it is actually. You see that? Sometimes actually these uh, 
these extra like these when you kill these missile batteries and or at least it seems like those times the variants of the Grister's Den where you have to destroy the light missile battery they'll spawn another missile battery like we saw here they just spawned another one actually so you kind of have to kill that to be able to get to the next wave actually let's take out this one yes okay good 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 now we've got a bunch of NPCs that will just go really fast Yes, I've not noticed a whole lot of drone aggro, but I think it's pretty obvious why that's not the case, because these guys are just falling so quickly, they don't even have enough time to be able to switch to my drones. And if something does switch to my drones, I can imagine the drones do switch on them, and then they die pretty quickly. Lock up these guys. I thought this site was actually finished right there, but oh, we've got a new wave right here. There we go, finish this, and unfortunately, no, 5 out of 10. Maybe next time, maybe next time, but I think next time I use the drake for some pve activity it's going to be low sec hunting for clone soldiers because those are actually a lot more frequent than the escalations back in the day when i hunted the clone soldiers i would actually get maybe three or four an hour i don't know if the spawn rates have changed but i'll get about three or four of them an hour actually if i were to just straight up be hunting them for a straight hour i'd get on average about that many so it's a lot more frequent it feels like than it would actually be to get these escalations this escalation seems really rare Otherwise, for you guys who made it all the way to the end, or to the end of the video here, uh, thanks a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.